Welcome students, you are given this question, x squared positive x positive 1 is equal to 0 and x is the element of a complex number and we are expected to find the value of this expression, x raised to the power of 77, positive x raised to the power of 76, positive x raised to the power of 75, positive x raised to the power of 74, positive x raised to the power of 73. Now, what most, what they would do is, they would start off by saying that x squared positive x positive 1 is equal to 0, it is given. So, this is a quadratic, so let me take a to be equal to 1, b to be equal to 1, and c to be equal to 1. And they would say that this is negative 1 plus or minus root of 1 negative. 4 divided by 2 which is negative 1 plus or minus root of negative 3 divided by 2 since it's a complex number I can rewrite this as negative 1 plus or minus root of 3 i squared divided by divided by 2 and this is equal to negative 1 plus or minus i times root of 3 divided by 2 so you got the values that x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus uh, uh, I think I should start with the positive sign i times root 3 over 2 or x is equal to negative 1 negative i times root of 3 over 2. So they, what they would do is immediately they will say wow the, this looks very complex so why not I drop it but this is where they are doing a big mistake. They need not have to drop these values all they need to do is just go on just continue on to use the values of x either negative 1 positive i times root of 3 over 2 or negative 1 negative i times root of 3 over 2 they would get a value now why are these two values important of course some of us would immediately conclude wow i have been given x squared positive x positive 1 is equal to 0 so that would mean i can clearly say x cubed is equal to 1 actually what they are missing out is they can't simply come to this question x squared positive x positive 1 is equal to 0 so x cubed is equal to 1 how how are you getting it that is the important point right so when you say x cubed is equal to 1 you are connecting uh, an expression here right this is not a root this is actually a polynomial quantity that is present on the left hand side if you want to find out the roots then you will have to state it like this x cubed negative 1 is equal to 0 okay that is altogether a different story our point is this is given how are you concluding that x cubed is equal to 1 not by theorem but we can literally see it why this should be the case now if you were to take this ex expression a cubed negative b cubed it has a equivalence which can be rewritten as a negative b times a squared positive a b positive b squared now, if I were to replace a by x and b by 1, then I would get x negative 1 times x squared positive x positive 1. And then, because x squared positive x positive 1 is equal to 0, this is given. Now, why did I say that x element of complex number is very important? Because this will not happen in a real domain x squared positive x positive 1 will never be equal to 0 in a real domain. It can only be equal to 0 in a complex domain. That is why x element of complex number is very crucial in obtaining the solution to this question in the correct manner. It is imperative to understand the most important aspect in mathematics is, is to understand why are we doing this. That's, that's the key. Solutions are not important, but the procedure the logic, the rational, as well as the justification that is behind, that is required to convince even the most skeptic person that our solution is the solution. So that is the objective. Okay, now having mentioned this, let us move on. Now this is going to vanish and that would mean I am left with x cubed negative 1 is equal to 0, which implies x cubed is equal to 1. Now what generally most people would do is they will stick, hold on to this and they will say wow I have got x cubed is equal to 1 so let me use this over here now by doing this what they are doing is they are failing to see the other side of the valley right 
In other words, they are only seeing things unidimensional. That is only one dimension is being seen when you use x cubed is equal to 1. As I mentioned to you, it is not the solution that is important. It is the reasoning as to why we are doing it. That is critical. Okay. So, let me just finish off with this particular aspect. What happens when you take x cubed is equal to 1? So, for that, what we, what most of the people will do is, they will, from here, they will take x raised to the power of 73. So, if you were to take x raised to the power of 73, you would have x raised to the power of 4 here, because 73 added to 4 would give you the first quantity. This is going to be x raised to the power of 3, followed by x raised to the power of 2. This is going to give you 75 and x, that's going to give you 74 and positive 1. Now, you are using x squared positive x positive 1 is equal to 0, right? It's given. So, this is going to vanish. And that would leave you with x raised to the power of 73 times x raised to the power of 4 positive x cubed. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take x cubed out of this. And this is already vanished. So, this would give me x positive 1. Okay, and then they will again resort to this system. X squared positive x positive 1 is equal to 0. So, from here I can write x positive 1 is equal to negative x squared. Okay, so this would be negative x squared. So, let me place that negative x squared there. And this will be x to the power of 3. And this will be x raised to the power of 73. So, if I were to add all these things, this is nothing but x raised to the power of 73, positive 3, positive 2. 3 plus 2, 5, 5 plus uh, 73 is 78. Of course, there's a negative sign here. So, place the negative sign, place the negative sign. So, this is what we've got. So, let me use this side of this uh, page. So, this is nothing but x raised to the power. Of course, there's a negative sign here. And this is 78. I'm going to write 78 as uh, what? How many times uh, 3 divides uh, 78? Let, let's check it out. So, 3 times 2 is 6. I got a 1 and an 8. So, that's 26. So, this is going to be x raised to the power of 3 raised to the power of 26. So, x cubed is equal to 1. So, what they're doing, they're taking x cubed, which is actually an expression, right, and substituting it and then saying, okay, we got negative 1. Okay, this is actually negative of 1 raised to the power of 26, which is nothing but 1. So, you got a negative sign there. So, that's the solution. Okay, so fair enough. So, you are getting a solution. In fact, you're getting a value for the expression that is required, and and that is okay. But what happens if there is a question? What would you get if you have used this? Because this is the root, right? This is a root. But you're not using a root here. You're using an expression's value. X cubed is equal to 1 is an expression. X cubed is equal to... You are, you're not actually using the root. The, the most important question comes here. What happens when you use the roots of this? So, that is the first point of contention. Now, the second point of contention is that you don't have to you know, come to this particular point and extract the roots and then say, wow, this is not going to work. This is very tedious. This is actually not tedious. You can, you because if we are going to slip or skip everything that is tedious, then there would not be a subject called mathematics. Because mathematics is a subject where the more tedious it is, the more lucid the solution would be, the more easier the solution would be. So that means we the it has got great uh, similarity to life also. Now, if you push forward, you're going to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Okay, uh, so much so for all these uh, explanation as to why we should not uh, strike off this and use this uh, equation and then uh, conclude why we should not do that. Now, having mentioned this, I'm going to show you what happens if we take these values, how exactly we could still employ these values. There is no harm in reducing this expansion or this expression into a quantity that is manageable. There is no harm at all in doing it. But we should showcase the application of roots into this expression. That is critical. So let me just uh, move on. So what I've got here, I've got here x is equal to negative 1. I'm going to use plus root of 3 over 2. Now, I got an i there. So I need to place that i. So I'm going to rewrite this as negative 1 over 2. Uh, positive i times root 3 over 2. Now, this is a complex number. And any complex number, z is equal to a positive ib. 
Euler has given us an expansion or an expression by which we can write that. So we can write it as r times of cos theta positive i times sin theta, where r is equal to root of a squared positive b squared, and my theta is going to be tan inverse of b over a. So if I were to find the value of r for this, r will be one, and my theta, if I were to find it out, it would be two pi over three. So I will be able to write this complex number. Z is equal to one plus i times root of three over two as a complex number one of cos two pi over three positive i times sine two pi over three. Now this can also be written by using Euler's uh, favorite e raised to the power i theta expansion. So any complex number can be written as z is equal to r times e raised to the power of i theta. So this is actually e raised to the power of i times two pi over three. You can also write it like this. This 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 is also one way it's possible. Okay, of course. So we will be using this representation. So have that in one corner of your mind. Now there is nothing wrong in reducing the expansion. See, actually we have this expansion, right? We started with. Let me write down the expansion. The expansion is okay. X raised to the power of seventy uh, six. X raised to the power of seventy five. And x raised to the power of seventy four. Plus x raised to the power of seventy-three. We we arrived at negative x raised to the power of seventy-eight. There is nothing wrong in coming to this particular point. Now the question comes is how are we going to use these roots? So that is my point of contention. Now by De Moivre's theorem, see suppose you have a complex number z represented as say cos theta positive i times sine theta and You want to find z raised to the power of n. Then I can rewrite this as cos theta positive i times sine theta raised to the power of n as cos n theta positive i times sine n theta. So by using this, I can rewrite this as negative. Now what is x? X as a representation as cos cos two pi over three positive i times sine two pi over three. This is raised to the power of seventy-eight. Now, if I were to replace this, this is going to be negative of, by De Moivre's theorem, cos of two pi times seventy-eight divided by three positive i times sine of two pi over three times seventy-eight. Okay. Now, what is this exactly equal to? Now, three divides uh, how many times? Three times two is six. I think this is one uh, eighteen. So now I have to multiply two with twenty-six. So that will be fifty-two. So this is negative of cos fifty-two pi positive i times sine fifty-two pi. This is what I've got. But what is cos fifty-two pi? Cos fifty-two pi is one. What is sine fifty-two pi? That's going to be zero. You can check it out. So that's going to be negative one. So this is the value that I've got. How did I get this? I did not get this by substituting x cubed is equal to one. Right, I have literally used the concept of complex numbers x element of c in arriving at the solution. So that is the crucial part. This is important. This is imperative. Why? Because if you were to solve this, the same thing in a different manner. Say, for example, I'm going to use just one more way. There are many ways by which you can obtain the value for this expansion. I'm just giving you one more way. So you got this. X is seventy-three. You got this. Now I'm rewriting this as x raised to the power of say seventy-five. I want to use this expansion value x squared positive x positive one, and then I'm rewriting this as x squared raised to uh, x raised to the power seventy-two times x squared positive x positive one. Now if you were to multiply, I get seventy-five times x squared seventy-seven. That's fine. Seventy-five times x seventy-six. Seventy-five times one seventy-five. That's fine. X raised to the power of seventy-two times two uh, x squared. This gives me x raised to the power of seventy-four. X raised to the power of seventy-two times uh, x. This gives me x raised to the power of seventy-three. But x raised to the power of seventy-two times one. I get an additional x raised to the power of seventy-two. So I need to subtract that. So that's exactly what I'm doing. Now, since x squared positive x positive one is equal to zero, all of this will vanish, giving me with negative x raised to the power of 
Now, what I wish to do is, I don't want to do any conversion and things like that. I need to just simply substitute the value for x that we have found. Simply substitute this. That's all. I've just shown you how to get this, right? So, if I were to substitute that, cos of 2 pi over 3 positive i times sine of 2 pi over 3, this is raised to the power of 72. By de Moivre's theorem, this is going to be negative of cos of 2 pi over 3, right, times 72 plus i times sine 2 pi over 3 times uh, 72. This is what I've got. Now, this is equal to negative of 3 divides here, uh, how many times? 2 times 6, 24 times. This is going to give me cos 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 2 is 4, cot, cos 48 pi, positive i times sine 48 pi. This will vanish, but cos 48 pi will give you 1. So, this is going to be negative 1. You see that no matter which way you use to solve it, you will be able to arrive at the solution. So, thank you students. I hope you understood the, the signs the mathematical algorithm that goes behind the scene. Thank you students, enjoy it.